Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. If you are a regular AI Breakdown listener, you will know that over the course of the summer, there was a bit of a cooling, an ebbing, if you will, of the hype around AI. Now, as we discussed, there was, I think, an open question around the extent to which this AI hype cooling was actually AI hype cooling versus just a convenient counter narrative as the next thing for media to talk about as related to AI. And at least according to Wall Street, the hype is certainly not gone, not by a long stretch. We are just coming off second quarter earnings season, and the discussions around AI were a dominant theme across a huge array of companies, not just big tech companies. According to the Washington Post, more than 1,000 companies mentioned AI in their quarterly reports. Now, that number is fairly similar to last year's number, but about 50% higher than the period between 2020 and 2021, and up from just over 30 a decade ago. Now, of course, the highlight company in this is NVIDIA. NVIDIA's second quarter earnings report, even with incredibly inflated expectations, still blew those expectations out of the water. It was called the earnings guidance heard around the world and was even called a 1995 internet moment. What the Washington Post points out, however, is that it's far from just tech companies or infrastructure companies that are talking about artificial intelligence. Some examples they give. Fidelity talking about the technology as a way to help detect fraud. Alaska Air using it to find more fuel-efficient flight paths. Medical companies like Hologic using it to identify certain conditions, in this case, precancerous lesions. The owner of KFC and Pizza Hut using it to better connect online orders with brick and mortar stores. And Ulta Beauty using it to power its, quote, virtual try-on and skin analysis tools. Overall, they say one in seven public companies talked about AI in their most recent filings. Now, that said, some companies are mentioning it not just as something to get investors excited, but also in the part of the report that deals with coming risks. Companies like Adobe and Zoom noted that regulation of AI could disrupt their business models. William sonoma cited intellectual property risk. Now, we will have some tests upcoming of just how far hype gets a company on Wall Street. On Friday, The Verge published a piece called Arms IPO will tell us how much AI hype matters. The subheader reads, SoftBank is hyping the AI potential, but its public filing shows a slowing mobile market. Now, Arm which I always used to refer to as ARM, but apparently people just refer to like the body part, is a company that designs chips and licenses the designs to other people who are actually building the chips. So as The Verge writes, ARM's IP is licensed by companies such as Apple, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA, which use ARM's blueprints to design and fabricate their chips. Now, the reason to be concerned about this IPO, according to The Verge, is that demand for mobile devices, which has long been ARM's bread and butter, has been slowing somewhat. For example, according to the filing, the company's revenue fell 1% in the fiscal year that ended on March 31st, 2023. What's more, its net income for the quarter that ended in June was less than half of last year's. At the same time, there is growing interest among many of the companies that already work with ARM, such as Apple, Amazon, Google, to custom fabricate their own AI-specialized chips. So in many ways, you have what is set up to be a referendum from investors on whether the slowing growth in the mobile market is more important to the company's destiny than the growing potential for its AI business. Another company with growing Wall Street notice is South Korea's SK Hynix. The Wall Street Journal this weekend wrote a feature piece called This Company is NVIDIA's AI chip partner and its stock is soaring. The WSJ writes, The hardware powering the current artificial intelligence craze is most closely linked with NVIDIA but packaged alongside NVIDIA's brainy H100 processors are specialized memory chips that enable the mind-boggling number of near-instantaneous computations behind AI applications. SK Hynix is the main provider of the latest high-bandwidth memory chip for NVIDIA's top-line AI processor chip. The WSJ goes on. Despite a severe downturn in the broader memory chip world, caused in part by slumping sales of smartphones and computers, SK Hynix's stock price has risen by almost 60% since the start of the year. You'll notice one of the things that I frequently say is that what's most interesting to me about an article is not so much what's contained within it, but the fact that it exists at all. And this is a great example of that. On any given day, if you search AI on Google, for example, a lot of the top results are going to be around AI-related stocks, stock picks, stock predictions. And I think in some ways, this article is an example of the sophisticated highbrow Wall Street Journal version of this, 
which is identifying a company that is perhaps little known, or at least less known than some of its larger peers, and giving it big exposition, as opposed to, for example, Motley Fool stock picks or something like that. But really, I think it's part of the same consumptive impulse for investors who are coming to grips with the AI trend, understanding which companies might help them actually profit from it. Now, for the back half of this brief today, I wanted to look at two sets of studies that I thought were interesting. One comes from the global small business platform Zero, who surveyed over 3,000 small business owners from countries including the US, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Singapore, and the UK. Now, on the concern side, small businesses seem to be most concerned around sensitive information disclosure and data privacy violations, each having 41% of those surveyed say they're concerned with those things. That's followed in third place by worker displacement, with 38% of small businesses calling it the biggest ethical challenge of AI. At the same time, as a crowdfund insider summary piece says, data privacy concerns don't reflect actions. Only 32% of the small businesses surveyed aren't taking any proactive steps, while the majority are either experimenting or investing or working with third-party vendors. Interestingly, right now, 51% of small businesses surveyed said they trust AI with identifiable customer information, while 45% say they trust AI with their sensitive commercial information. In terms of the big question about its impact on jobs... 14% of the businesses who are currently using generative AI have already seen a reduced headcount. In terms of overall sentiment, there is a pretty even split, with 30% reporting being excited, 32% reported being intrigued, and 31% feeling anxious. Now, the second survey that I want to discuss comes from Salesforce. It wasn't only about AI, but AI was one part of it. The report was its sixth annual State of the Connected Customers report that surveyed 11,000 consumers and 3,300 business buyers to get a feel for some big questions such as how changes in inflation and the economy are impacting buying decisions, and in general, what people think about business performance among the companies that they do business with regularly. The headline AI stats, 68% of respondents said that advances in AI make trust even more important. However, only 51% of consumers said they trust companies in general, and only 45% of consumers trust companies to use AI ethically. Now, a last meta-narrative note before we head out. The title of this piece in Fast Company was Salesforce, a surprising number of consumers trust companies to use AI ethically. But then that seems to be contradicted by the body paragraph, where they frame it as when it comes to AI, only 45% of consumers trust companies to use AI ethically. Perhaps this is some sort of weird reflection of media not really being able to make up its mind about how it wants to interpret data, but then again, it could just be not the best editing. In either case, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.